below. In this video, we're going to create a header element as a flex box, and we're going to add nav buttons to it, and we're going to style the header entirely and the nav block as flex box containers. So let's get started with our HTML. All right, so we've seen this from the previous video. So far, we don't even have a header element, so let's add that. And we will put it around our H1. Okay, so a header element. And inside that header, I am gonna paste a very, very typical nav bar, all right? So uh, it's nav slash nav, a nav element containing a UL element, and inside that UL, there are four list items. Now, I have not styled them as A elements, so they're not actually links to simplify this. So we're going to work with these four words as if they were links, as if they were actual navigation. Um, let's save and reload and see what it looks like by default. Okay, doesn't really look like a header. Um, the heading, the H1, looks the same as it did, and now we've got these four things in a list. So our first task is going to be to add a header uh, selector to our CSS because we didn't have that. We worked with these two things in a previous video, and since header comes near the top of the page, I am going to put it right after my headings. So I'm adding a header selector to my CSS. And the first thing I want to do is make it uh, display flex. So it doesn't have to be a div. It can be a header, an article, or anything. I have now created a flex container, and it is the header element that I put on my page. So I save and I reload to see if that did anything. Well, it did, because by default, um, the flex direction is row, and the default start location is the beginning or the, the far left side. So the change that we see just by adding one thing, display flex, is we have now taken the header containing two things, an h1 and a nav, and those things now become a row, and they go side by side with each other. So how about if I want the nav to be all the way over on the far right side of my header element? How would I do that? And this is part of the justify content. So when we say justify content, content, um, uh, previously, you saw space between, and let's try that and see what it does. Well, that's pretty much what we want it to do. What if we had done flex end instead? You might have thought that would work, but it actually won't, because that pushes the heading over to the right side also. So uh, what we really want is space between, which we used before. And there's only two elements. So because of that, it puts a big space in between them. That's what it does. It spaces out the elements we've got within the flex box evenly. And if there's only two, it means it puts the first one on the far left and it puts the second one on the far right. So another thing we need to do is we need to um, put a background color on our header element so that we can see what we're working with. And I'm going to use this. And when we reload, we should see, yeah. So um, we probably want some padding on the inside of that, and we probably want a margin below. So let's put those above our flex element. I'm going to use rems again because they're so nice. Uh, maybe two rem, might be too big, but we'll see. And margin, let's make it zero to begin with, and then we'll add a margin bottom on the bottom of perhaps one rem. So save and reload. 
Yeah, I think that uh, the two rims looks too big, but I think it's going to change nicely as we work with that nav element. Okay, now we're going to style that nav and make it look like an actual set of navigation buttons. So let's uh, go back to our CSS and we're going to use a new selector. We are going to use nav ul. And the reason we're doing it this way, we have to affect the ul, not merely the nav, because then the container would affect the ul and not the li elements. Because remember, the container affects only its direct children, not its descendants. So if we put these styles on nav alone, they wouldn't work. So we're putting them on nav ul because we only want to affect the ul that's inside the nav, not other uls that might possibly be on the page. So we've given it a display flex, making that ul a flex container. We've said list style none, removing the bullets from the li elements. And we've given the UL a margin of zero because ULs come with some margin from the browser. So we save and we reload and we see what that's done. That has made our four links or our four navigation LIs uh, go into a row because the default flex direction is row, okay? Now they're smashed together so we might want to add some margin, probably only on their left side, to space them out a little bit. And we'll do that on the nav ul li, right? So we wouldn't affect any other li's that might be on our page. And we can say uh, margin zero to zero them out, and then margin left, and maybe we'll make that one rem and see what it looks like. Okay, now they're spaced out, they're readable. Um, we might not like their position top to bottom, their vertical position, and we might not exactly be happy with the vertical position of uh, this yet either. Um, so how would we fix that? How would we align these two blocks so that they were in the same place vertically. Well, we want them to align probably on the very center of the text, not on their baseline. So the way to do that would be to go not into the LI, not into the UL, but actually into the total containing element, the header. So that contains everything up top, and we're going to affect the two elements inside header, which are the H1 on the left and the nav on the right. So we're going to center those along the horizontal axis, and we'll see how this works. That's probably about what we wanted. Um, I'm wondering if there's some extra margin on my H1, because that still seems a little bit high up. Aha, I've got an old margin on my H1 from the past design. Yep, that's what I want it to look like. So now we have done uh, an aligned center. We've got the text on both sides aligned across the center of the text. And now the last thing you might want to do is make the navigation uh, links um, on the right side look more like buttons. You might want to keep them as text, and remember we don't have A tags around them, so they're not actually links. But if you wanted to make them uh, look like a button of some kind, what you would do is you would add a background on the LIs. No special flex things, just add a background. And then you probably also want to add some padding. Um, let's see how it looks first. Yeah, some padding. And save and reload. And there you've got it. Now you've got a header element that is a flex box. And within that, you've got 
um, an H1 that goes all the way to the left side. You've got a nav that goes all the way to the right side. And you've got separated links inside that appear like buttons. And of course, you could style those more. Let me note that this is not the way that Robbins styled her header. And I prefer this way to her way because I feel like by making the UL a flex container, we have more control over those LI elements inside the UL. Oh, and how would this uh, go in and out, eh? So when it got very narrow, you see that there would be a problem. So when we learn about responsive design, we're going to learn how to fix nav for small devices like phones. But for now, we don't need to worry about that. And this was your second lesson about CSS Flexbox. There's one more to come where you're going to see a lot more about shrinking and growing.